Hello everyone, it's Dr. Nikki, the board certified family nurse practitioner back in the house. I hope you're all doing well and you are staying safe. In today's episode, I will be talking about measles. Measles is a very contagious disease, very common in children. So, you can get measles through uh, contact with somebody that has the, you know, the measles unvaccinated children or if you travel outside the country you can contract measles that measles that way all right so we'll talk about the symptoms of measles and then we'll talk about the prevention okay so as I said before it's very contagious and a lot of people just associate rash as a symptom of measles but we do have other symptoms as well such as runny nose such as cough such as high fever up to like 104 degrees Fahrenheit we have red or watery eyes and then we have a rash and typically the rash may not um, occur or appear until three to five days after the symptoms start all right so yes we have high fever cough runny nose red watery eyes and then the rash that comes later all right so it's very contagious as I mentioned before um, it's spread through um, the air when an infected person coughs or sneezes you can catch it that way all right so a lot of people do um, can get measles as I said before in the United States the rates are lower but then we do have travelers that come in international travelers unvaccinated travelers that come in or even you can catch measles in your community as well if there's an unvaccinated person around okay so yes measles is very dangerous it's very contagious and it's important that you know this as a parent so that you can appropriately care for your children and provide them the needed vaccination that they need okay so as I mentioned before the rash sometimes appear later a couple of days later after all the symptoms begin and so you have to be very very careful okay so also I mentioned that in the United States you know even though it was declared eliminated into in the year 2000 we still have um, some people that do end up having measles because of maybe they they came in contact with somebody that had it or an unvaccinated person that came into the country or in their community they got it that way but we do have a very good effective uh, vaccination program here in the country that helps to provide vaccination for measles and other um, childhood diseases all right that we have okay so it's important that you let your children go to their pediatric uh, pediatrician very on a regular basis so that it can keep in touch with them and also be able to make sure that they are getting their vaccinations on time all right so the prevention for measles prevention 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 I always say prevention is better than cure you want to prevent measles by getting a vaccination called MMR 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 stands for measles mumps and rubella measles mumps and rubella it's very important that you have MMR vaccination for your children okay so MMR provides long lasting protection against all strains of measles and it's very very important we have the first dose typically between 12 and 15 months of age and then the second dose between four to six years I'll repeat that the first dose typically between 12 to 15 months of age and the second dose between uh, four to six years um, for the best protection that is what is recommended um, but please note that even if you do not get your vaccines at the right time or let you know make make sure that your children get them at vaccines at the right time or the required time you can still do catch up all right so and this applies to other vaccines as well you see people say oh I mi missed my ch child's vaccination 
appointment um, yeah if you do miss the appointment well try not to miss the appointment but if you do miss the appointment please make sure that you schedule a follow-up and they could do a catch-up um, vaccination schedule for your child all right so first dose between 12 and 15 months and the second dose between four and six years so it's important that you do follow the recommendation and the guidelines you can always get more information and vaccinations from your primary um, care provider or the pediatrician also go to reputable sources or websites such as the CDC and um, the, the World Health Organization regarding uh, vaccinations okay so yeah as I mentioned before, MMR starts for measles, mumps, or rubella, and it's important that you let your children have the vaccine. All right. So yes, measles is very contagious. It can be spread. It can be in the United States. It can be outside the country. You know, unvaccinated travelers. And yeah, that is what you need to know about measles. Please make sure that you do get your children vaccinated. Measles is also called rubeola. All right? Measles is also called rubeola. It could be very serious. It could be very fatal for small children. And um, yeah, you should please get vaccinated. Get your children vaccinated. Make sure that you observe for symptoms of measles, as I mentioned before, fever up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit dry cough runny nose sore throat you know red or watery eyes which is also known as conjunctivitis you can also have you know white spots with bluish white centers on the red background found inside your mouth it's called cock leak spots okay cock leak spots and then we have the rash that I said um, appears a couple of days after the symptoms begin so it's very important that you observe for these signs and symptoms and you keep your children away from other people all right you keep your um, children away from other uh, people when they when you observe symptoms because we do have a communicable period a person with measles can spread the virus to others for about eight days starting four days before the rash appears and ending when the rash has been present for four days so we have a communicable period that you want to make sure that you um, keep your children away because they can spread the virus to other people and also you want to make sure that you take your children to their pediatrician for follow-up if you think that they've been exposed to measles or if you think that they have a rash that resembles measles okay always let your uh, pediatrician or your healthcare provider give you a record of your vaccination of your children's vaccination let them give you the vaccination records let them give you a vaccination schedule so that you can be on top of your game and make sure that you know when this um, each vaccination is due all right so yes as I said risk factors for measles include traveling internationally uh, being unvaccinated we have a lot of some people that do not believe in vaccines we have people that are unvaccinated and then if you travel outside the country to developing countries measles are, um, is more common in developing countries and so you are at higher risk of catching the disease over there and then another risk factor is having a vitamin a deficiency all right if you do not have enough vitamin a in your diet you are more likely to um, have um, more severe symptoms and complications of measles all right so as I mentioned before prevention 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 is better than cure the MMR is the vaccine that is given to children all right MMR is the vaccinations measles mumps and rubella please get your children vaccinated lastly I will be talking about the complications of measles yes measles have complications so yes you want to be vaccinated so that you can um, reduce the risk involved so complications of measles may include pregnancy problems if you're pregnant you may need to take special care to avoid measles because it can cause maternal death 
low birth weight and preterm uh, pre- labor or premature delivery. All right, so I'll repeat that. One of the complications of measles is that it can cause problems in pregnancy, such as maternal death, meaning that the mother, the pregnant woman, can die. Okay, we have low birth weight of the baby, and then we have premature delivery or preterm labor. All right, and then we have pneumonia. Pneumonia is another complication of measles. We it's very common complication of measles. People with um, immunocompromising symptom um, systems can develop um, pneumonia. All right, so people with Compromised immune systems can develop this problem and it's very dangerous and it's very fatal. All right, and then we have air infection. Air infection is the most common complication of measles and it's um, a bacterial air infection. So you do have a bacterial air infection and that is one of the complications of measles. And then the last one is uh, bronchitis, laryngitis, or croup. So we know that measles can lead to inflammation of your voice box. Your voice box is also known as your larynx. Your voice box is also known as your larynx. So measles can lead to inflammation of that voice box and cause inflammation of the inner walls that line your air passages, um, which is your bronchial tubes. So yeah, I see. Measles have complications. So it's important for you to get vaccinated with MMR vaccine. Okay? So yeah, as I said before, the first dose is typically given between 12 and 15 months of age and then the second dose is typically given between 4 to 6 years of age. So please talk to your doctor if you're concerned, if you have any questions or concerns about your child, talk to their pediatrician, talk to your healthcare provider and they will be able to guide you appropriately. Alright, so vaccinate 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 and also isolate your child if you know that if you think that they have been exposed or if you think that they are breaking out in a rash that is related to measles all right thank you very much and um, i hope this helps i can spread this to other people friends and family so that they know about measles and their children and i will catch you in the next one take care of yourself continue to stay safe And I wish you well. Bye-bye.